right, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Osmig here. Uh, this is going to be our sit rep for Wednesday, uh, March 9th, 2022. And I will tell you, we have a lot to cover. So buckle up. This is going to get uh, going to get crazy. And I can tell you, it's not going to get any less crazy between now and the time all this stuff kicks off because it is definitely going to be kicking off. Remember, too, if you guys want to support the, uh, the channel, be part of the less than 1% of the total followers, uh, you can do so over on Patreon or in members here on YouTube. Uh, for as low as three dollars a month so it is uh, greatly appreciated and uh, we couldn't do it without you so all right without further ado let's hop over here real fast to sky glass kind of kick it off uh i will tell you folks uh as i watch the flights and i've watched um the troop movements and i've watched uh the assets being put into play and i'm watching how the other countries are reacting we are without a doubt on the brink of World War III. I think this thing is, uh, I will be personally shocked if uh, we get to the end of spring and, and this thing hasn't kicked off. I'll be honest with you, because uh, just the rhetoric that's going around between countries, the repositioning of, of um, allies, uh, and I'm gonna show you here in a couple minutes, look at a couple articles, you can just see a lot of the things that are taking shape uh, is going to be biblical. Ain't no doubt about it. Um, you can see them positioning themselves exactly as the Bible said was going to happen in terms of Gog and Magog. This is the trip when, you, when I show you the, the news that are coming out. Um, and these aren't, you know, the NBC's mainstream media mockingbird stuff. This is the little stuff that you just never see uh, that I usually cover in my monkey minutes. So, all right. So uh, just to show you real fast here in uh, Skyglass, just you can see we do have... Uh, the Q4, this is going to be our drone. Now, I did not see that a minute ago. I was looking for it over in the normal um, um, flight app that we would look at for this uh, because we usually get a handful of, of um, things being tracked in that. Uh, so I just brought it over to Skyglass. I've got a lot to cover in Skyglass. Uh, you definitely, this, this is uh, pretty wild. But uh, this is a Q4. This is a U.S. Air Force reconnaissance um, drone. Uh, currently up over, it looks to be over the Black Sea. Um, and, uh, and I'll show you why that's important here in a minute uh, as we kind of get into the region. But this thing is grabbing data all the way into Moscow. I mean, it's, it's, it's got a range of around 20, I forget. Well, you know what, I'll have to go back and look at it. But it's uh, 1,500 square miles, I think, is, is the range on that thing. And so... In either direction, this thing can be grabbing data 1,500 miles out. And so uh, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's looking at everything that's laid out between here and Moscow. So uh, just because it's over that general area doesn't mean it's not looking way out there. Uh, altitude on that thing's at 52,000 feet. Um, you can go a lot higher than that, too. So just want to point that one out. Now, let's uh, take a quick gander. Uh, just show you we're going to just bounce around at my my watch list okay just so we can look at the aircraft specifically and then i'm going to show you kind of the roll up of things okay so uh jake 11 is going to be our r135 we're going to go into detail on that one here in a minute uh mush 49 that is an e6 currently running routes over florida we're going to look at that closer here in a minute as well forte 10 that's going to be our q4 drone uh and i know this bouncing back and forth like uh, time travel, it's pretty wild. But um, and then these shiners, uh, I want to show you these. We've got four R135s up globally right now. Uh, the one, this one right here that says Snoop 33, that's the one that is the C or WC model that actually is sniffing the air for um, nukes and the like. Okay, so that one has a little bit different capabilities. Now I'm not going to go into everything on my watch list. Just want to point out those because we're going to go into further detail now um, with those aircraft, okay? And um, so let's get over here real fast. I just want to show you the heavies today in uh, the EU. You can see they are still moving a lot of assets around, a lot of troops around. Uh, but this is really mainly going to be assets. Remember, we're feeding this beast, okay, in terms of uh, the things that they need to fight this war. We're giving them intelligence. We're giving them... Uh, assets, Stinger missiles, uh, a lot of different things, all right? Now, if you look at, uh, from a tactical standpoint, uh, the aircraft, like the fighters and the, uh, the H-60s and the gunships, um, not anything really going beyond Germany. Everything seems to be kind of staying in the UK 
and in Germany in terms of what we can see, but they are more frequent and I'm seeing them a lot more uh, now than I've seen in the past. So that means they wanna be seen. The ones that are over close to the border of Ukraine, um, they are not, uh, they're not showing themselves, okay? And that's, we expect that, all right? So, uh, but that is that one. Now let's take a quick look at the, um, at the tanker activity, uh, both on the US as well as over in the uh, EU. And as you're gonna see, the, uh, quite a few tankers up actually, uh, mostly centrally located, uh, but they look to be headed out coast to coast. You can see we've got some activity down uh, south. And then if we get um, over here to the EU, you can see a lot of the routes being flown out of the UK and then out of uh, the Germany area in terms of air refueling capabilities. Now you'll see uh, as we get over closer to the border, you can catch the air refuelers. That would indicate we've got fighters up. Uh, you can see them running those uh, the air refueling routes over there. And so um, that is, uh, you know, like I said, that, that just shows you we've got fighters right up against the border. You're just not going to track those fighters, okay? Okay, now let's get over here to the R-135 activity because I want to just show you what's going on here in the U.S. Now, we do have one that has come out of California. It looks to be a uh, Beale Air Force Base uh, that's running some routes kind of east of California between there and, and towards um, Vegas and, or sorry, not Vegas, uh, Nevada, that general region. And then we've got uh, one out on the, on the center coast that we normally have. And then this one, this Jake 11 is the one that we really pay close attention to. Now this is the one that's running routes and I'm gonna show you what they're gathering data wise. And you'll see, um, again, these aircraft, this thing has the ability to track a soccer ball, something the size of a soccer ball, from 300 miles away, all right? So when it's right up there along that border, just floating along, it's gathering intel, and it's basically gathering uh, data from uh, like battlefield data, right? It's looking at all the assets on the ground, and it's, it's gathering just tons and tons of intelligence. So I uh, wanna point that one out. Let me back out of the sky glass real fast. Let's get into um, flashbang schedule today. Then we're gonna just kinda peel the onion and, and head on over across the drink. So it uh, looks like he's meeting with business leaders for a uh, discussion about our economy, uh, that the fact that it's in the tank. Uh, but he continues to make moves, as I mentioned before, called jellyfishing, where you uh, try to fix one problem and you create multiple problems. And it's because this, uh, this guy's just not competent enough and his team's not qualified enough to actually make the decisions we need to get us out of this mess. It's almost, it's almost comical, really. Um, so... Uh, not funny to you and I, the taxpayer and the people that are footing the bill and are feeling the brunt of it, but to watch this happen, uh, it is just, it's like the village people and you've got, you know, one village idiot up there at the top uh, driving, the, driving the bus. And so it's, it's, can't make this stuff up really. Uh, let's get over here to TFRs uh, just to show you what we've got going on. Now we've got some storm system moving through here in the Southeast, but if you get over, Looks like we've got uh, Flashbang headed to Camp David into the bunker this weekend. Uh, this is going to be the Senior Living Center here. And then if we get over to this side of it, this looks to be Space Operations. That's out. Uh, this is actually White Sands. Uh, this is a national park in here, but I believe it's security TFR. Uh, but we've seen that in the past, and it's got kind of a weird hook right there. I'm not really sure what that's all about. But typically when we see this, there's some type of... Um, you know, Virgin um, launch, you know, missile launch or something, right? And so then we've got this little one out here. I don't know what that is either. Let's just take a quick look while we're checking it out. Security TFR, probably tied to this one here. Um, but there is no telling. It may not be tied to a launch. That'd be something completely different. But um, all right. And then this, this down here on this side, I want to say that was an air show, but let me just double check. Yeah, air show. Okay. Now we'll back up a little. That's air show over Vegas still. That's a security TFR over Beale Air Force Base, which is a normal one. And then we get up here and we have this one that is tied in uh, in this general area in Alaska. Now keep in mind, we've got a very large military exercise taking shape right now. And so uh, I su uh, just assume this is probably part of it, okay. All right, that's our TFRs. Now let me just make sure, let's get over. I'm gonna show you current time in Ukraine's at 7.10 p.m. 
So we are kind of wrapping up, headed into the nighttime hours. Now, if we get over here, this is where I usually find the Forte. Uh, not seen it just yet. Let me see if it turns when I, when I do a re refresh on here. No, I'm not really. Oh, there it is. Okay. So that's going to be the Forte. That's the one we were just looking at that's doing the, the, um, the routes out over the Black Sea, which tells you that uh, there's probably some naval assets. But again, this little dude has got the ability to punch in way north and way south. So if, if he's in this area, he's grabbing everything that's on ground in Crimea, everything from cell data to uh, assets on ground. Um, it's, it's pretty wild. And so, uh, but that's that one, okay? And then also, let me back up just a tad. I wanna just show you, because we, we have not talked about this in a while. Current, uh, if we look at the volcanic activity, just kind of show you, we've got some stuff down here in the Indo area, this one here in Japan, um, and then we've got these in Central and South America that just continue to fire all the time. Every time we're in here, we see. All right, come back to ADSB here in just a minute. Uh, actually, you know what, let me do this. I wanna show you, uh, while that thing marinates, I'm gonna take you over here to the E six activity i want to show you this was up over florida is currently up over florida right now uh, remember this is an airborne command center this is what they call looking glass and it basically talks to uh coordinates launch commands with icbms okay and so this bad dude is up over florida uh running a square route over the entire state which i thought was pretty interesting same altitude just kind of level set just running this big round or sorry this big square box pattern. I'm not really sure why, but uh, very interesting data point, okay, <laughs> to say the least. So, all right, looks like uh, Open ADSB has decided to cooperate with me on the screen load. So, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, so you're going to have, that's actually, I think the Gitmo bird, uh, eight, just not showing, showing the zeros, but we're going to talk on Gitmo here at the very end about prisoner transport, and I'll show you which one went outbound where that went to and from, okay? So, uh, but we'll come back to that. Have a couple centuries up over the, uh, the normal areas. A uh, lot of tankers, again, like we've already looked at. But um, we'll come back to this at the very end if we have time. We got a lot to cover, like I said. Now this, this R-135 rivet joint that we've been talking about, like this one right here. Uh, rivet joint is the type of aircraft. Just wanna show you. Uh, it basically detects, identifies, and geolocates signals throughout the electromagnetic spectrum, right? So uh, when I'm showing you these, these aircraft, I just want you to be aware of, uh, now there are a bunch of different variants of that type of aircraft. Uh, like I said, this one up here, the Snoop, uh, actually that's Topcat, this one is the Snoop 31. Snoop 31 is the one that, sent, it, that smells the air, okay? Uh, and this one here is another one of the rivet joints that basically maps out the battlefield stuff, grabs data. Uh, it's kind of a catch-all, right? So, okay, over here to Ford Observer. Um, and just FYI, if you don't follow these guys uh, and you want a really good source, kick everything else to the side from the mainstream media and just grab one. Uh, it is definitely worth the money. These guys are... Uh, I actually went back and looked at them because uh, they had reached out to me uh, because I had been talking about their stuff on here and I guess they were really appreciative. And I just, uh, I, you know, knew nothing about them. Like I said, uh, don't know them from a sack of potatoes, but evidently these guys are all former intelligence guys, um, dudes that have been spent time. They're all vets in a nutshell. There's only four of them, I believe. So, uh, but if you want a good source for intel gathering globally, uh, these guys have the background experience, and um, they put together a really nice summary of what's going on on a daily basis. So, okay, so there, um, as we talk about this a little bit, just want to show you, uh, as I continue to show you the, the balloons that track us and all the other stuff, just want to point out, stuff isn't going away. DHS surveillance program, they're getting called out on the carpet again for doing secret bulk surveillance. This time it uh, has to do with transactions between the U.S. and Mexico. Uh, anything greater than 500 bucks, which is, you know, that's probably pretty much gathering everything probably, right? So, uh, but that is one of many. And so, like I've said before, these people, uh, our government is watching us left, right, and center, okay? Now, the other piece, too, I just want to point out we're going to talk a little bit more about the aircraft requirement or request, um, but it looks like 
Biden has finally uh, announced that he would suspend the oil and gas imports into the U.S. Um, now, I don't know about you, but if you've been to the pump in the last three days, uh, you're going to have sticker shock uh, if you walk out of there with, without putting your kidneys on ice because uh, I think 93 octane was running about $4.70 a gallon. Um, if this gets cut like they want to do uh, and passes, um, you're probably going to be looking at anywhere from 8 to $10 a gallon uh, on gas here in the not too distant. Okay, so this is not going to be good. I don't know how they're going to curb all that other than tapping into our reserves, but that's usually short-term fix, okay? All right, so let's get on down with the story. Now, this is where I want to start talking about the aircraft request. A uh, statement of uh, foreign affairs from, from uh, the minister, actually, it's a statement from the minister of foreign affairs in Poland, basically uh, is saying, you know, to the U.S. Secretary of State's Hey, we need airplanes, right? If you guys will provide them, you can bring them here, uh, park them in, uh, you know, nearby. We'll come and get them. Uh, but they're basically, I think they're wanting to fly them all into Ramstein or Ramstein Air Base in Germany. Um, and they're asking for anybody that has MiG-29s uh, to, to put those in. They're asking the U.S. for jets. Now, I will tell you, from a fighter pilot perspective, uh, being a pilot, you do kind of get, uh, you know, there's a general feel across you understand your your console and your your you know all your gauges and everything else however you don't just jump in from a soviet russian mig-29 into an f-16 it just doesn't happen that completely different everything reads differently it's in different languages um and they fly differently okay and so in order for the u.s to even give these guys aircraft they're going to have to have pilot training programs and a lot of different stuff um, I just can't see it in the immediate future. Now, they may start to grease the skids and bring folks over to train them on how to fly our aircraft. But uh, in the meantime, uh, it's looking like they're wanting MiGs. Now, if you look at the area in general, you will see, um, and we're going to look at this closer here in just a second, but Russia is starting to pre-position their surface-to-air systems, S-300, S-400 um, missile systems that will take these aircraft out in a New York second. Okay, so. Um, just keep your eye on that because this is actually stoking the fire. If we start to provide or the other NATO countries start to provide um, the Ukraine with the ability to defend itself from an air perspective, then um, it, it won't be long and we'll be fully engaged in this. Okay, So uh, just a data point, but we've got to definitely watch that. Now, let's get over here to the drive. I just want to show you this one. I thought this was really interesting. This is a train. Now, if you guys play video games, I will tell you, there's a lot of games I've jumped into as of late where this, this, um, you know, like Call of Duty Vanguard and things like that, where you actually see trains like this. And you always think it's just kind of a game thing, but this is real. Uh, and it's kind of an interesting deal, but this is a, uh, a gunship kind of, uh, a train, right? I mean, it's just stacked with, uh, it's like an armored train with weapons on it that is made to drive through the routes and just blast stuff pretty wild uh, you do see the z painted on the side of the of that train but you get closer look at the trains and stuff you can see there's guys actually sitting on this thing with uh you know um that looks to be some type of um air defense guns right there um i think but i'm not 100 percent. i'm not really up to speed on my on my soviet uh, weaponry other than it is highly dated uh, but yeah, this is just kind of an interesting deal. So this train rolls in, full-on armored stuff. It's got, you know, weaponry on it that is like mounted to the train with all kinds of armor around it. So it's pretty wild. So, okay. Now this is the thing I want to transition to just a tad as we, as we talk about it because I always bring us back to the Bible. I try to tell folks, you know, this is kind of a preemptive. We're starting to see this Gog-Magog uh, alliance start to shape up. Now, this is Israeli 365 News, and they're actually talking about um, that Western Europe is now making moves to unite and form their own military. Um, we've heard Macron talk about it, um, and so this is a new development, but we definitely need to pay attention to it. Uh, as you know, you can see Macron, sorry, is the one that is um, talking about this. So big driver in the region, and uh, wouldn't be surprised at the end of all this. 
I know from World War II and one, I think there was actually, as soon as everything finished up, there was a reshaping of not only the, the, the unions, but, um, you know, how they went about war, right? And so thus NATO, okay? So this is going to be really interesting to see how this all takes shape. Now, the other piece, too, this is out on Zero Hedge today. The Saudis... Uh, and the UAE are now refusing to take Biden's call to talk about Ukraine, and they are actually talking to Putin instead. Again, Gog Magog, this just reinforces what the Bible tells us is going to come into shape in the not-too-distant future. So keep your eyes on that one, all right? Okay, so we saw the Q4 out in this general area. This is the Black Sea. He was actually flying back and forth in the middle here. Uh, you can see it's still very open. That is one, let's be a tanker. This is live data, by the way. Um, that's not a tanker, that's a cargo ship. The greens are cargo, reds are tankers. Uh, you can see they're still trying to get over here to this side of the Black Sea. Everything up in here is really not, uh, it's wide open and not moving, okay? So as we get into the military forces, um, I'm gonna expand this so we can get a better look at it, uh, just to kind of show you where that is on the map. Now right in here is where the Q4 drone is flying. And of course, they are looking at this kind of stuff. Now, why is it important? It's not just important to see what kind of military assets are on ground in terms of troops, but the equipment is very important because uh, some of this stuff, as you will see, like this right here, those are surface-to-air missiles. Those are S-400, S-300 systems. Same thing with this. When you start to see these bubble into the area, that means the Soviets are about, sorry, Soviets, the Russians are about to take uh, they're probably going to start bringing them into this area, and they're going to take control. So as a countermeasure um, to us providing them with aircraft, all right? So you can see these, these units here. Um, you can actually see them up here, which is very interesting, uh, and talk about strategic, and the same thing with this one. Now, we were looking at the Jake uh, 11, uh, R-135 running those routes through here. When they're doing that, they are basically grabbing all of this data. They're taking pictures of, of these things parked. Um, now, keep in mind, too, these are mobile, right? So the S-300, S-400 systems, anti-aircraft systems, are on wheels, man. So they move them around, and that's why it's important. You may have a snapshot today, and in 24 hours, that bad dude is gone, and now you're trying to find it, okay? But you know it's there. So, um, but this is also why you see them running all the way up in here to Latvia, Lithuania. They're running routes because the Soviets are stacking stuff in at this port and they're moving these assets. And those assets are going to be coming into play as they come down through Belarus. Uh, they're going to avoid Poland right now, okay? But they're going to come down through Belarus and they're going to continue on their attack into the city as they take control of this region, all right? But you can see the assets. You're not seeing stuff in here as much as you're seeing it out on the outer edges, and that's because all of this stuff is starting to get pushed in to the region as they take control. Um, I will tell you, it is a, um, uh, it's, it's slow, and I don't think it's going as fast as he is expected. Um, I will tell you also from an observation standpoint, uh, they don't look as powerful as everyone thought they were going to be. I think this is kind of a shock. I mean, you think about Ukraine not having any way to really defend itself to the degree that they need to um, and relying on NATO and other countries to, to help them. But uh, imagine what it would be if they actually did have that help. Uh, this is kind of an interesting deal. So I think that's uh, why you have nukes on the table as an option, right, uh, for Putin, because he's, uh, if we were to fully engage, I think he'd have to go to that, that tactical nuke scenario just in order to, to win this and believe me he's not going away uh if you know get gog and magog in your bibles russia iran turkey are three players that are known to be here um you know at the end so just a data point again all right let's get over here to the flat map i just want to show you uh as we get into this this are a current live map of all the cyber attacks you can see europe is firing pretty heavily right now uh, U.S. is getting a little bit of an uptick, but uh, again, this is just, you know, keep our eye on it because I think when we actually do see a true cyber attack taking shape as kind of the new face of war, um, you'll see this map will be just completely covered up, to say the least, right? So, okay, let's get over here to the troop movements, just show you real fast. This is going to be 
the UK Royal Air Force uh, looks like uh, they've got everything from things headed into Islamabad um, or actually out of Islamabad. Notice these are down here in um, at Nellis. That is a Eurofighter right there, the UF-1, I believe. So, uh, but I will tell you that is probably tied, not, not probably, that is more than likely tied to a red flag. However, notice where it's going from there. It's headed to Bermuda. So that's these aircraft right here headed to Bermuda, which, uh, I don't know, gas stop, maybe, uh, especially if you got a fighter. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's probably an air refueler right there with the fighter. So that's probably a fuel. Okay. So there is going to be the UK and their movements. As you can see, a lot of stuff headed in. You're noticing, too, there's a lot of things going on in the Middle East uh, in terms of movements. Telling you, that's why I say this is going to go pop off into World War III here pretty quickly when it does go hot. Um, because we've been watching assets move for thir at least the last month. Asia, big time. Europe, big time. And the Middle East, big time. And so these are just continuing to, to, to put quarters in the machine, right? So, all right, this is going to be our camber flights. These are U.S., um, same thing, kind of the counterpart to... Um, to uh, the UK troop movers, all right? And so uh, only seeing one in terms of the flight. You can notice we got three that are up. These are outbound, no destination. Uh, other than this one you see is kind of, looks to be headed into Northern Africa, uh, which is interesting. Um, remember too that the Soviets have, um, they control the airport in Benghazi and they have surface to air missile systems. Uh, and I want to say S-300s uh, in that uh, region right there. so uh, that could be why we're positioning assets around there as well and then these are going to be the omni flights uh, this one is 100 percent uh that's going to be moving uh bananas back and forth uh that i am fairly confident i can't say why but i'm just fairly confident that is what we have going there so they definitely move uh, immigrants as well as troops okay i'll just put it that way and then this one here we don't see on the board coming out of Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, wait, sorry, we do. I just wasn't high enough. Anchorage, Alaska into Japan. Like I said, they've been feeding that, putting quarters in that uh, Asian machine over here for uh, a month. So we've got assets big time, just every day. Keep adding to it, all right? All right, Bigs Army Airfield. This is kind of our hub. It seems to be where everybody's processing in and out. So there's this one coming out of Alliance. And then this one here headed to, it's an Omni. Um, headed over to Anchorage from there. This United Airlines to Houston uh, scheduled departure. That, I man, I'm having a feeling these are poppies okay, and not troops. Uh, and then it's coming out of La Crosse, Wisconsin uh, inbound. So if it's troops, that means we've got stuff going on domestically in the U.S. realigning because I'm not seeing any uh, international flights headed across either drink from Houston. Okay. All right. Now let's get over just real fast. This is Kiev. I just want to show you uh, again that uh, airspace is everybody's avoiding it. That's what we've seen for a couple of days now. And then uh, this one here, same thing, right up against the border. You can see very active into Poland and that region, but nothing really uh, along that way. Okay. All right. Over to the NASA birds. We got a P3 that's up over uh, the water, like always. I don't know why it just did that to me, but. Um, this is, uh, yeah, I don't know what they're doing out here. They definitely are doing something, okay? Uh, and usually we get a U-2 that's out here, and we've been watching them do some search routes along this coast too. Uh, and then, of course, we got some stuff down here. Now, remember, we've got that E-6 flying that box over Florida right now, as well as some NASA birds up doing some things, and a couple of P-8s that have been, you know, coast to coast over here in Tampa as well as Cape Canaveral. All right, now this one I just want to point out, um, I will tell you, I'm just going to throw this out. This is not a dig at Trump by any means. I will tell you that I am, and I'm an avid Trump supporter. Um, and if he was in office today, we wouldn't have the situation we're in. I can guarantee you that 100%. However, one thing I do want to tell you, as I go and dig into the World Economic Forum and I look at uh, candidates that have been through their class, and their placement, and these are guys like Macron, these are guys like Buttigieg, these are guys um, uh, Newsom from California, Trudeau from Canada. Uh, these are all Klaus Schwab people that have been through the class. It's a five-year program. 
and they basically come out and go into training and they get put into key positions to execute the Great Reset plan. And when I ran across this one, this name has been removed from the World Economic Forum class of graduates. However, if you go to the Trump White House archives.gov and you look up Ivanka, you're going to find that this young lady was a graduate from the Young Global Leaders of the World Economic Forum in 2014. So telling you, we may think we got all the people identified and pieces of chest in play that are part of this Great Reset plan, but I don't think we do, okay? They are everywhere, all right? And so not saying she's part of that. I'm just saying data point, uh, but uh, just a data point, like I said. Uh, but you got good old Kushner right here who's pushing – He's leading the whole Mideast peace plan. He's still got his hands involved in that. So uh, just another data point, all right? All right. Now, here's the one I got this uh, the other day. Somebody was asking me, and I, I saw it actually again today on the feeds, that the U.S. is sending 9-11 suspect home from Guantanamo Bay for mental health treatment. Uh, so I was looking at the flights coming and going. Uh, now, this is one flashbang just sent this guy supposedly home yesterday. Not the case. This actually took place back on the 2nd of March. Uh, this is a little bit of a lag, probably intentional for security reasons as they get this guy out. But let me show you the flight. Uh, this is the flight actually took place. This is on the second. It's the only medevac flight. It's the only flight that actually has come and gone that's been kind of out of sequence. Everything else has been on the regular stuff. But on March 2nd, we had this one leave Guantanamo Bay, went to Lauderdale. And if you go in and you look at this particular aircraft, N60LJ, the medevac bird, um, and you go back down to the 2nd of March, I'm going to show you it went from Guantanamo Bay to Lauderdale, and from Lauderdale up to Norfolk, Virginia, at, that is where the off point was. So this, this gentleman that got sent back for mental health reasons uh, departed the U.S. probably from the Norfolk area, okay? So from there, I lost track of him, but I will tell you that is more than likely what happened because I don't ever see these flights go up here uh, in general, coming out of Guantanamo Bay, not a medevac flight. So, all right, so there is that. Now let's get back over here to open ADSB Exchange. Now, I'm a little bit over on the, on the minutes here, folks. Sorry, I had a, quite a bit to cover today. I just wanted to make sure I got it all in. Um, but uh, what I'm going to point out real fast, we're going to look at Florida. I just want to show you the P8 activity. Uh, as you can see, that is a pretty tight circle now. The question is, and that's a sub hunter, and it looks like you've got two of them, two sub hunters. All right, uh, is that American, or is that going to be somebody else off our coast? Don't know if it's American. They're doing comms, but I do find it interesting. And the reason I say this is because you've got an E6 flying a square. Remember, that's Airborne Command Center that talks to our missiles. Um, it's called Looking Glass, and then you've got uh, two P8s that are naval. Uh, sub hunters running routes off in this general area off of Florida. Also, uh, you can see this one here uh, also running some routes. That's another P8, right? And then you got this one over here, which is another P8 coming out of Tampa. Um, and if you look at that route, it's very interesting that it was circling down here, Lake uh, uh, Okeechobee down here. That's off of West Palm Beach. We know who is in and out of West Palm Beach. Looks like it did a touch and go. Uh, right there in uh, Trump's backyard. And then some touch and goes here. And now it's headed, looks to be headed back up to Jacksonville. But uh, that's three Navy P-8s in the general area running some routes. And then that is Mush 49. That is actually the one that's running this tight box over Central Florida, which is very interesting. Again, if you're not familiar with this aircraft, that is going to be, that's an E-6. It's called uh, E-6B Mercury. And it is an airborne command center um, that uh, talks to our missile programs, that little doghouse on the top. It's got a pretty good electronic suite on it, uh, but that is primary mission. It basically has to do with ICBMs, um, kind of almost like the doomsday plane, but the doomsday plane probably controls these guys here when they're doing stuff, all right? Uh, that's like big picture, okay? All right. Well, listen, that is going to conclude our sit rep for today. I hope it was informative. Um, uh, it's just hang on to your shorts. I'm telling you, this stuff is going to get crazy. Um, it, it's uh, a good time to really have uh, this um, 
a good grasp on the Bible and what it's telling you is coming because this is uh, stay stay tight in prayer because it's coming fast and furious and uh, it all aligns with it. You can't make this stuff up. So uh, interesting times, man. What a time to be alive to say the least. But just remember, faith over fear. You guys, listen, keep your powder dry and stay frosty. And we'll talk soon. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.